Well, yes, that music means it is, of course, time for the Sunday Sermon. And it's always about something that's wound me up during the week. And unfortunately, I seem to have wound up myself because it turns out that I am a reputational risk. Yes, there's a story in the Sun on Sunday today about what I've uh, learnt from the return of what's called a subject access request on the debanking saga. Yes, it came back to me from a bank in the city where I was trying to organise a new loan and I sort of wanted to know why, first of all, they approved it and said it was fine in the first investment committee and then it went to the second committee and it was supposed to be a rubber stamping exercise and they declined it. And I thought at the time, that's very odd because it just happened to be the day after with Nigel, we'd written an article saying we wanted a referendum on net zero. Anyway, so finally we've got the subject access back and as revealed in The Sun on Sunday, yes, it says that I am a reputational risk. Really? I mean, what's risky about a bloke who's actually got a successful career in the world of business? Someone who's built thousands of homes for people to enjoy and to live in. What's risky about that? What's risky about creating tens of thousands of jobs, skilled jobs, trades, carpenters, plumbers, joiners in the world of construction, apprenticeships, these sort of things? Is that a risk? Why is that a reputational risk, I would ask? Someone who sold out before the crash of 08? Someone who's created shareholder value, ran a big multinational listed business, tripled the share price, in four years, created lots of shareholder value, attracted hundreds of millions of pounds of investment into the UK economy. Is that a reputational risk? Or is that something to be celebrated and encouraged to help grow the economy, to help create more wealth, to help create higher wages? How is that, for heaven's sake, a reputational risk? Quite extraordinary. Maybe it was their concern that I'd help win the largest ever democratic mandate in the 2016 referendum. Or the reputational risk of helping to win a European election under proportional representation so that we had the largest party in the European Parliament. Is that a reputational risk? Or is that, is that the sign of someone who could actually help make things happen and get stuff done? Or is it the reputational risk of turning around a failing secondary school, turning it into an academy, being the chair of governors and helping it go from being at the worst possible rating, requiring improvement, to becoming outstanding. Maybe that's a reputational risk, I don't know. Sending pupils for the first time ever from that school to Oxford and Cambridge, is that a reputational risk for heaven's sake? I don't think so. I think that's what we want. I think we want people to be successful to work hard, to create jobs, to create activity. I think what's happened here in this situation is you've got some 23-year-old straight out of university who's probably done some useless, utterly hopeless, ology-style degree. And he said that I'm a reputational risk and he's, put it, he's ticked the boxes in the forms and he sent it up to his managers and the managers sent it to the people on the investment committee and I didn't fit in all the boxes. And so they said, no, sorry, sorry, Mr. Tice, you're just a reputational risk. Well, if you think that's bad enough, maybe you don't think it's bad. There's more to come out in tomorrow, son, because it turns out it's not just me you see where this all goes. You could say, well, that's your tough business for putting your head above the parapet and saying what you feel, but even those who are related to me, close family relatives, children, children of cousins, all this stuff, cousins, they're all impacted when they try and open bank accounts, keep bank accounts, do other business, because they're related to someone who is a politically exposed person. It's unbelievable. And what it does, it damages our economy. You might think, well, it's just a few bits of paper. But let me tell you, it pervades everything. Because there's this new thing I spoke about a few weeks ago, where they call environmental social governments, governance. Do you remember that? No one had heard of it before. And then there's another thing 
called Equality, Diversity and Inclusion. Well, I've renamed these things. I think equality, diversity and inclusion actually stands for extremely damaging ideology. That's what it stands for. And this thing called environmental, social, governments, I've renamed that too. Energy sapping garbage. Because all of this stuff, this isn't really about me, it's about the impact across our lives. The impact on other people. The waste of time, the waste of effort. All this unproductive, box-filling nonsense. It doesn't create any value. It doesn't create any useful jobs. It doesn't create any skills up and down the country, does it? It's utterly hopeless. And the truth is, you know, if you want people to come into public life, to do good things, to put their head above the parapet, and this is what happens, then don't be surprised when their families, their partners, their other halves, their kids, their cousins, their brothers, their sisters, they say, for heaven's sake, don't. It's just going to be a pain in the backside for all of us. And this is what happens now when you're looking for good candidates to stand up and down the country. You know, they're having to put their head above the parapet, which should be welcome to take part in the democratic process. But for too many, they say, I'd love to. You know, I'm a successful person. I've got a track record, I know how to do things. But the family don't want me to. And you can understand why. And that actually is the opposite of everything we want in our society, in our country. If we want to get Britain back on track, then we've got to actually focus on getting some stuff done. It's not supposed to target families and relatives, all this stuff. There's more coming out tomorrow about how a bank intruded in the emotional, personal lives of a close relative of mine. Unbelievable stuff. I actually just want to say sorry to my close relatives and to my cousins, distant members of the family who have been dragged into this nonsense, all because I'm a politically exposed person. Anybody associated with me who gets tied up in this stuff? I mean, it's just completely unnecessary. I think we've got to start again with some of this stuff, just scrap the whole politically exposed person rules and regulations. Sometimes things are so bad you can't repair it. You've just got to scrap it, put it in the bin and start again and make it a simple one pager that we can all read and understand. Don't gold plate it. Don't treat it as though it's some mandate from the EU because guess what? We've left the EU. We've just got to get stuff done. Move on. Action, I think, is what I want. And let me tell you, when you talk about risk, I'll tell you the biggest risk. The biggest risk in life is never taking one. Because if we don't take any risks, we're never going to make any progress. We're never going to get stuff done. We're never going to move forward. The truth is, life is a risk. There's no fun and there's no progress by sitting in your bedroom, taking a deliveroo. So there we are. That's my view. The biggest risk in life is never taking one. And with that, here endeth my Sunday sermon.